are still trying to make their way up here and thank you Chuck for your generous gift and thank all of you for yours and you guys can be released thank you and thank you for those of you online who I'm sure participated and sewed into this I knew it would be this way. It was when you get this many prophetic stallions in a room. <laughs> it's like, and I'm not really exaggerating in what I'm about to say. We could just gather for three hours tonight, three hours tomorrow, three hours in the afternoon, even, and just prophesy for three hours at a time and decree. And it would, I've never been a part of a gathering that had the kind of the, the, as much of a prophetic swirl. It's almost like, I mean, I don't know if it's just this gathering or if we've just moved into this new era that, that I, I've been announcing, some of you I'm sure have as well, for weeks now. This is not just a new season. This is a new era we're moving into. And I'll just say this, there's never been anything on planet Earth like what's about to happen. <laughs> Not because we're, we're, we're the best, but because of what Jesus is building. And he said, I'll build my ecclesia. And we're about to, t he's about to take this thing to another level and I've been also prophesying we're going to see more people saved in the next 20 years than we've seen in the last 2000 and I think just to just to speak a little more specifically that Asia and the Middle East are about to be hit with the greatest spiritual tidal wave that's ever hit planet Earth. And to think we get to be a part of that. That's just amazing, and that's just amazing. And the breakthroughs that we have been crying out for in this movement of prayer for the last, some of us, 25, 30 years, maybe there are some of you in here uh, ever since the charismatic movement and the Jesus people movement crested and we moved into out of that and sort of in between movements, uh, that which we've been crying out for, fasting for, praying for, decreeing over, we're about to step into. And the tipping of the bowls that I mentioned earlier, it's not, it's not because he's got the the best group he's ever assembled in one place Amen. or watching online. It's, it, it, did that come out wrong? I'm not saying we are, even though somebody over here thinks maybe we might be. I don't know. I don't think there's ever been, I'll say this, because of what he's doing, not because of our of who, anything about us, because of what he's doing, I don't think there's been maybe since the book of Acts, an assembly with as high a level of revelation regarding ecclesia as is gathered here because he's been restoring to us that understanding and now he's going to take it to the next level. So I thank you again for being here. I want to just uh, pause and say my staff has uh, worked night and day I have some of them that drove from, that pulled a, what, a 28, I don't know, 28-foot trailer with all this equipment in it and set it up and slept none, or didn't go to bed till 6 a.m. Uh, this morning. They're doing a great job, and, and and the, you know, the sound and lights, when you put something like this together, you have no dry run. You just test it with no people in the room, the sound, the lights, and, and you can't set up the speakers wherever you want them. You just have to kind of do it.
it here and make it work. I just think they're do, they've done an outstanding job, and I want to thank them. And they did forewarn me that it's going to be darker in the room, brighter up here because of the projectors and the TV stuff, and I'll get over it. Because I like to see the whites of your eyes. Because I want to know when you're convicted or when you're excited. I know. So what I want to do is, and this is the way Chuck do all these, when we gather for the 50-state tour, or the 22 cities we've been doing, we sort of tag team it. So we don't, I don't plan to go for an hour up here. I'm just going to do my half. I'll probably do 30, 35, 40 minutes. I don't know. Maybe I'll shoot for 30. How's that? Because I want to leave some time to pray, and some of you have gotten to the age where Maybe it is good that I can't see the whites of your eyes because <clears throat> some of you will. Y'all just help each other, okay? If somebody starts nodding, don't just hey, hey, hit them really hard, you know. But what I want to do, even though you've heard some of this, I feel like I need to put into a package why we're here. And the prophetic words and dreams, just a few that have come to me, not personally necessarily. I didn't have all the dreams, but, but they've been given to me from others and some to me that can get us at a place of faith and understanding so that throughout the rest of the evening as we pray a little bit into it and then all day tomorrow and Saturday, we can do, we can be with just really focused, laser focused, because we're not just here, we're not here just to do what we've done so many times. Frankly, you know, though the Lord may say, do, he may bring something up and say, repent, but we're really not here to repent. Not because we, that's, that's not a part of the equation, but simply because there have, there has, there has been so much of that of the reconciliation and the repentance and the solemn assemblies. And that's all a part, a necessary part of who we are, what we've had to do in our identificational repentance and intercession. But we're here to, de we're here to be the ecclesia. We're here to rule, we're here to decree, we're here to shift this nation into the three years of turnaround that's been prophesied. So let me just, let me tell you how this gathering started, and I'm going to move quickly. I didn't do anything with the appeal to heaven message for a year. And I, it's not because I just thought God gave it to us for the elections of 2016, although the Lord used it in wonderful ways in that season to generate prayer. And it took on a strength and move, a, 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 a momentum of its own, which is what really should happen if something is truly a move of God. It can't be generated by a person. So wind came to that and it just took off. And now that flag has been to the North Pole, the South Pole, the highest mountains in the Himalayas. It's just everywhere. Because it's not just an American flag, although it was used in our history. It's really a kingdom flag. And some of you have read the book, Appeal to Heaven, or seen the YouTube, or heard me do the message, and you know my story, but others have stories as well. But it was just too holy for me to want to use it, because I could, I could have ridden the momentum, the blessing that was on that movement for the next 10 years. I could have generated millions of dollars for this ministry on that movement alone. But I just told the Lord, I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm just not going to do that. I know what you had me doing then and until, if and when you tell me to do something else with it, I will. But I'm not going to just do it because it's working. It's just too precious to me, the whole revelation. So I didn't do anything with it and, and, and was just asking the Lord, what do I do? And the Lord gave a dream to a friend of mine. Uh, Clay Nash, and he, he said, I had a dream last night of a, of a ship sitting still in the water. 
and there was a wind-driven ship sail, big sails, like the pilgrims came over on, I guess. Uh, and then he said a wind came, and he didn't say started the ship moving. The way he said it, I felt like was a play on words from Holy Spirit. He said, and a wind came and started a movement. And I heard not just moving the ship, but a movement. And then he said, as the sails filled with the wind, they, he could see they were, they were all five of them appeal to heaven flags. And at the bottom of each flag was the number, which I believe is the year 2020. And then as the ship moved into the distance, started moving away from him, he could see on the back of it the letters DSM, which is just what we refer to as our ministry, Dutch Sheets Ministries. We just at the office and what we're talking about, we just say DSM. So he knew, he knew that. He knew it was for me. And I knew the Lord was saying to me, there is another wind coming to this message. I'm not finished with it. And of course, he may never be finished with it. But I knew I was responsible to steward it to at least through at least 2020. So I just began to pray and say, Lord, when is this wind coming? And what do I do? When do I do it to relaunch? And then Chuck gave the word. And I've got this microphone up here popping, guys. And um, what's that? Uh, they know it? Okay. So I don't know if it's a weak battery or if I just need to trade mics, but if you're working on it, then fine. We'll just snap, crackle, pop our way through the message. <laughs> Holy Ghost Krispies up here, whatever it is. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> so Chuck gave his word in May of that year, last year. We were here for the National Day of Prayer, and he prophesied that there would be 10 months in this new administration and in America there would be 10 months not from inauguration, not from uh, January when he gave the word there would be 10 months of turmoil great turmoil and I'd say he passed that test <laughs> you don't get stoned brother but then he said, after 10 months, will come a breakthrough and three years of turnaround for America. And that's all, that's really all he said. He said, we just need to pray and don't get discouraged because of the chaos and the turmoil. Uh, and so, you know, the, and I'm, turmoil, are you kidding? I've never seen such hatred and such anger. And, uh, it's, and, and it's not just from the fringe. It's just from the mainstream of the, of the forces that don't like who we are and what God is and what this nation's founded on. They don't believe in the same destiny for this nation that we believe in. So the turmoil has been great, but he said there will be a turnaround, a, a breakthrough, and then three years of of turnaround for America. And I was, of course, praying in that like everybody else. And then I was in Korea with Chuck and Cindy and others. We were doing a conference there. And while I was up speaking, Cindy, knowing about Chuck's word and knowing about the dream about the flag and the ship, was asking the Lord while I was speaking. She was obviously bored with my message. <laughs> and so, so her mind just drifted off into prophetic never never land I don't know how they do it, but they do it <laughs> and then they come to you and act really spiritual afterward and act like it was all God I don't know what you talked about but the Lord spoke to me There are, there, are, there are many people on the planet other than my family that I have run with longer than the people sitting on this front row. So we have a lot of fun together. But, but 
Anyway, she said, the Lord spoke to me while you were preaching tonight. And about the word, the dream, and about Chuck's word. And the Lord says to you, relaunch, appeal to heaven on 2-22, February 22nd. Because the Lord said to her, look at the calendar and see when the 10 months are up. And she looked and it was, I suppose, part of the middle, mid-February, some point here. And she said, the Lord said, tell him to relaunch in Washington, D.C. on 222. And birth, birth the turnaround, the breakthrough and turnaround. And it will relaunch the worldwide prayer movement. <clears throat> so we prayed in that she said get a big place because you know normally we do prayer gatherings in dc we do three four hundred people we had one we think we packed out the maybe at chevy chase with like six seven hundred but that's it's hard to find big places here and she said but get as big as place as you can because they're coming they will come and we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do this and, and so we looked and we couldn't find a place here. We can, and I think uh, CC mentioned that earlier. We, we couldn't, we couldn't, it was either places were booked or, or they're for the money. It just wasn't worth it because you can drop a quarter million dollars in this city faster than you can drop a hundred bucks in this hotel. And you know you can do that pretty quick. <laughs> and Hannah came to me and said, I, we can't, I can't find anything. And I said, have you tried the Trump? And she said, well, it doesn't hold as many as we had hoped. And they're twice as much as anybody else because they're a five-star built for, for international leaders and government officials. And I said, well, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so I said, well, you know, shoot them an email. So it happens she email one evening the next morning at 6 a.m., 8 a.m. here. She got a call back the very next day saying, what do you want? What do you need? And she wanted them to know we weren't doing a banquet with tables, et cetera. And she started saying, well, we need theater seating and a platform and they'll be worshiping. He stopped her and he said, and I'm sure, I'm not saying he knew who we were already, but I'm sure they do their homework and don't just allow just anybody in here. But what he said was, oh, no, 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 I know who you are and I know what you do. I know all about the flag, and I know about the conferences you do. And we want you to do it here. We think we're a really good fit. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. And he said, we're going to work with you. We're going to get the prices as low as we can. We're gonna, you know, their rooms normally start at 700 a night. He said, we're going to lower, we'll lower the room rate, we'll lower the room rate, we'll, we'll just do everything we can to help you make this happen, and they have. So, you know, I mean, Cindy, Cindy knew what God was doing with the 222 thing. It wasn't just, that's the 10-month mark. She knows the Isaiah 22, 22 thing in my life, it made perfect sense to her immediately why God would do that. It's also George Washington's birthday and 22, 22 Isaiah, I, you know, give you the key of the house of David, put on your shoulder, key is authority, shoulder is government, and you'll open doors nobody can close and close doors nobody can open. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not just a verse for me or the prophetic few that's really a prophetic verse when it was given about what jesus inaugurated in matthew 16 when he said to his body i'm giving you the keys to the kingdom and you're going to be my ecclesia my government owner you're going to be the the earth extension on earth of the kingdom government of god and I'm going to give you the keys and you're going to bind and you're going to loose and the gates of hell won't prevail against you. It's just moving into that phase 
of the prayer movement where we, where we not only petition, we not only operate in our priestly role of requesting and let the incense, all the priestly stuff goes this way, but kingly stuff comes this way. And we're about to move into the highest level of revelation we've ever moved in, that we are seated with him in heavenly places, and we do share his authority, and his scepter is extended through us to rule for him in planet earth, and the ecclesia is going to bind, and it's going to be bound. And the ecclesia is going to loose, and it's going to be loosed. And it's going to shut doors, and nobody's going to open them, and it's going to open doors, and nobody's going to close them. <laughs> Because that's our privilege and that's also our assignment. And we're going to an entirely new level of that. So that's, you know, the 22 thing was obvious to me for lots of reasons why the Lord said do that. This was also, and when we set it up, then we realized, wait a minute. This is also going to be our 22nd city of the tour that God told Chuck to do. Jesus loves me. Chuck Pierce has a plan for my life. So when your schedule's already full and the prophet says to you, God just told me we're supposed to go to 22 cities. And I said, by video? But you know, he's a prophet. The Lord said, what are you going to do? Argue with it. <laughs> it's the ultimate trump card, no pun intended. It's <laughs> the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. So it's the 22nd city and uh, you're just like, okay, you can make this stuff up, can you, John? And so much prophetic swirl came. I have never, not even close, have I been in a season where I have had as many, so many, five and six and seven and eight a day dreams and prophetic words sent to me by email or text. It's almost like I just said, Lord, I can't even keep up with this stuff about what he's going to do here. I mean, it just became... If you don't believe this, then you're a complete prophetic cynic because God is speaking it so clearly that it's crossing into the new era time. And then who knew? Who knew? I mean, people have been prophesying for several years, not just there's one floating around on YouTube right now, prophetic word about Billy Graham, but this will launch the new, you know, but... I have heard this prophetic word, not that one, but so many people have just known for a few years now, there's something about his graduation to heaven that marks a crossing point that God's going to do some things and pour out some things. Don't be thinking that there's any one person going to get his mantle. A generation is going to get a mantle. And more. So there's something that he pioneered, he and others, or Roberts and different ones, but God's just been, he's just been waiting so that we would know the sign. Okay, here we go. But who knew it would be linked to the gathering of the ecclesia here when we're saying already, new era, new era, new era, turn around, turn around, great awakening, great awakening, great awakening. And just like, you know, who, who, I, it never entered my mind that that might happen while we, while we were gathering here. And then, of course, some of you heard the news today or saw the, the, the report about the, um, the, in Israel, them finding the seal of Isaiah and Hezekiah. Archaeological digs, they just found, and one of the articles I read, and you don't dare do this now, because God will hurt your computer. <laughs> but you can, you can go to John and, John and Jolene.us, that's J-O-N, not J-O-H-N, 
John and Jolene dot us, and and you can find uh, Hamill's report on that. You could also go to the dailybeast.com and read a report. On it. But one of the quotes on the Daily Beast was, "This is the very first extra biblical, in other words, other than the Bible, the very first extra biblical proof of Isaiah's existence." was released they found it a few days ago and chose arbitrarily we'll release this news to the world on 222 so isaiah 22 22 guy proof of his existence is released on 222 you can't make that up you can't make that up i'm just telling you you can't make that up if I wanted to construct a prayer to help God confirm to us that this was right and the timing was right, I wouldn't have been bold enough to put those two things in the, in the prayer. Take Billy to heaven and find Isaiah's seal in some archaeological dig. I... I just want you to know that this has all been orchestrated by heaven to bring us here, to bring people, those watching online, to bring us all here at this time to say, come on, if you decree and believe, I'll tip the bulls and we'll move into the new era. And then, you know, my, my, my friend Clay sent me another dream. You know, I, I'm just going to make Clay my official. Uh, once, a month, once a week, send me a dream, and it better be as good as this one. <laughs> but he was about three weeks ago, I guess. He says, and most of you have seen this because I've sent it out, but let's just enjoy it again. I dreamed last night of the turnaround meeting. In the meeting, there were hundreds of angels with tuning forks in their hands. Now, I've only been given three tuning forks since we got here so far. I thought about buying one before I came and I thought, save your money, son. There will be people giving you tuning forks. This is a prophetic gathering. <clears throat> How many of you have tuning forks with you? May I see your hand? I just want you to look around the room. At least a dozen, maybe 15. We could get a unique sound going in here a little bit if they're all the same key, I don't know. Angels, hundreds of angels, they're here. They are here with tuning forks in their hand. Reese Howells, the great assessor of the mid-1900s that probably he, Reese and his team uh, were as instrumental as anyone on the planet really of saving the world from the Nazi regime. Winston Churchill used to say, when Reese and his people pray, we win. And they got, they became so tuned in that they would pray over battles and strategies of the allied forces before the battles or the strategies were ever released or the battles took place. So he represents that high level of intercession. Reese Howells and then John Knox, who was also an intercessor. He's the guy that cried out, give me Scotland or I die in the mid 1500s. And he was also a great reformer. The queen of Scotland who didn't like him because she didn't like the Re reformation because she was Catholic said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of Europe. So in this gathering in the dream, Reese Howells and John Knox came in from the cloud of witnesses. Reese 
with a tuning fork like the angels had. And John knocks with a gavel. And of course, I've already had two gavels given to me. <laughs> How many of you also have a gavel with you in the room? At least a, about another dozen. We can rule on anything we need to rule. We've got gavels all over the room. <clears throat> so, but now, here, here we go. I'm taking too long with this, but Reese and John Knox, intercession, reformation in the dream came with a gavel and a tuning fork. They presented these to you in the dream to me. As they did, you smiled at Cece and struck them together, which I will in a moment. The angels all struck their tuning forks at the same time. Now, what's that all about? Tuning forks, to me, that, that is symbolic of a pure sound, accurate, pure, clear, being released from heaven, angels, cloud of witnesses, synergy of the ages, coming together. I struck them together, and the angels all struck their tuning forks at the same time. As the sound began permeating, as the sound, the sound began permeating the people, and they began to vibrate and spin, and morphed into an army of special forces. That would be Ecclesia. Illumination, light, came from them and filled the room. Then, and this, this next part of the dream, if, if you weren't, if you hadn't had happening to, to you what has happened to me over the last year, year and a half, this would sound weird. I mean, dreams are weird anyway, but that's why Lou's so weird, because he he's got all these dreams swirl around him all the time. We love Lou Weird, don't we? <clears throat> but John Wayne, I don't know if you guys have the picture, but John Wayne came into the room. And I've always wondered if he was, I've always wondered if he went to heaven. Well, if he came with the great cloud of witnesses in the dream, he's probably in heaven. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, boys. We're going to kick some devil butt. So, so here's what he did in the dream. Now, I say what happened to me. I've had at least five, maybe six prophetic words given to me in the last year about John Wayne. And the first one I thought, I run with strange people in this prophetic movement, you know. This guy said, I was watching you speak, and it's like all of a sudden your face, I wasn't seeing you, I was seeing John Wayne. I went, Okay, now you go into your room and you get some rest and I'll be meditating on that word all night. <clears throat> and then it wasn't two weeks later. Here comes another one and another one and another one. And I don't know if he was because he heard about it, but or maybe if, he, if, he, if the Lord told him, but no, Chuck gave me this little model car somebody had given to him and had a John Wayne picture on it. A, a little, I said, well, go figure. I mean, he's as weird as they come. <laughs> but, you know, so, so, so the Lord does this unusual thing at times, doesn't he? He does unusual things with us to get our attention because it comes a point when you just realize Wait a minute. 
this has to be God. I mean, there's no way five, six people are going to prophesy to me independently of the other about some John Wayne anointing. You can do beat people up, you know. So, he says, he came into the room from the cloud of witnesses and pinned a badge on me. I have one right here. Because a guy came up to me last week and gave me one after he heard this. I have gavels, I have tuning forks, <clears throat> before the conference is over I'll have a new phone, <clears throat> I have badges and the badge, he pinned a badge on me in this gathering in, in the dream, and the badge said, U.S. Marshal of the New Sound. How do you, you can't make that up. U.S. Marshal of the New Sound. Can you guys get a close enough shot of me to show my badge? Probably not. I may never wear it again, but I put it on tonight because, sure enough, last week, the guy heard me share this dream, and he came up and said, I used to be with the U.S. Marshal. I have a little pen I'm going to bring you. It says U.S. Marshal. So... I'm a walking prophetic act. <laughs> I'm ready for anything. <laughs> I have flags, I have gavels, I have Tuning forks times three. And there's a new marshal in town. <laughs> or sheriff or whatever. And of course, when, you get, when, when I get words like this, I mean, I just know the way the Lord deals with me and confirms things to me. And, and I, I realize so often, typically, what happens with me in a dream I mean, sometimes it's like I'm going to be a leader involved in it, but usually when God shows something that I'm doing or about to do, it's not just me, it's the movement I represent. And so to me, the, the martial thing, that, that represents the enforcing as ecclesia of the rule, the will of God in the earth. We're going to begin to do what he said Way back when he walked the earth, you're going to command my kingdom to come, my will to be done. You're going to close doors, nobody's going to open them. You're going to open doors, nobody's going to close those. You're going to bind, you're going to loose, you're going to start doing these things. You're going to see nations opened now that have never been opened to the gospel because a team goes in there of ecclesia and just decrees this door is now open. Because we've always supposed to have been wearing these badges and slamming these gavels because that's who we represent, the ultimate judge and the king. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. And I'm going to rush through this now because not only are the old folks tired, I'm getting a little bit there myself, and I know Chuck's about to nod off. Because Chuck gets, he goes to bed about eight, unless he's preaching, and gets up about three. And I'm thinking, you know, I. There's no part of his life that's not weird. That's uh, <laughs> so I'm going to finish with this just to just to share the you know just just point us in the direction we need to go for this entire gathering because I had one of the amazing most amazing experiences this year. Well, actually, last year at the end of the year. 
Because the Lord told me to go to Beersheba. And, you know, that's, that's where Abraham planted the evergreen on the evergreen, on the appeal uh, to heaven flag and called on everlasting God, the God of the ages who outside of, from outside of time moves us from season to season, <clears throat> excuse me, even through our sin and failures, he knows how to get us from the calling to the fulfillment. And even when we've sinned, just like Abraham did, when he uh, lied about Sarah being his, said she's my sister, you can have her, and, you know, and messed up with Hagar and birth to Ishmael. God knew those failures would come. And as Olam, the God outside of time that knew when I told you what I was going to do, what you were going to do along the way, but I knew that I could cleanse you. And before I finished with you, you'd be my covenant friend and a father of many nations. And you would be the one I could bring Messiah into the earth through. So the Lord said to me in the appeal to heaven movement and message, you're not going to get awakening or revival in America because you deserve it. If you deserved it, you wouldn't need it. You're going to get it because I'm Olam and I'm bigger than your sins and your failures and your broken covenants. And I'm going to do what I said I would do through this nation when I raised up this nation and gave you the destiny that I gave you to be the beachhead for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be sent into all the world. There's no nation that he's looked to to do that as much as the United States of America, and he's not finished. In fact, the biggest move of evangelism and harvest is just about to begin. He needs this nation. He's going to turn this nation, and he's going to move us back into our destiny. But in that message also, Appeal to Heaven, I talked about a dream that was given to a man for me in 2007. I was a boxer. You know the story, so I'm going to do it quick. I boxed five giants. I knocked out a giant per round for five rounds, five giants. I knocked each one out with one punch, and I alternated fists. Round one, knocked out a giant. Round two, knocked out a giant. Round three, four, five, five rounds, five giants, one punch each, alternating fists, walked out of the boxing ring to the young man in the dream who was having the dream, held up the two boxing gloves and said, if you're going to take out the giants in this season, you're going to have to wear these two gloves. One said everlast, one said evergreen. Everlasting God and evergreen was, is all about covenant. One verse, Genesis twenty-one thirty-three. Abraham wore both gloves. He planted an evergreen as a sign of his covenant with God. And he called on everlasting God, everlast, evergreen. I preached that message for a year, year and a half. Then the Lord said, I want you to go to that verse, not only in the book, I want you to go to that verse. Go to Beersheba because you're coming into the season of taking out the giants. And I want you to go get the gloves. So we put the trip together. And here's what I didn't know. I didn't know that on October 31st when I was traveling to Beersheba that that was also the anniversary of Reformation Day when Martin Luther nailed the 95, whatever it was, theses on the church door at Wittenberg. I didn't know that I was literally en route to Beersheba on the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. I also did not know that I was going on the 100th anniversary of the battle of Beersheba when, Jeru when uh, uh, 
Britain and Australia and New England, I mean New Zealand, helped overthrow the Turks at the Battle of Beersheba, which led to the recapturing of Israel, of Jerusalem from the Muslims and the Jews returning there. So, no, no, I want to make sure you got, you get that. I did not know that I was going to Beersheba to get the gloves to take out giants, the revelation. On the anniversary of the battle of Beersheba and the 500th anniversary of Reformation. But the Lord did. Which is why I had the demonic encounter in the Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey airport. Which most of you probably know the story. Maybe a lot of people watching don't. But as I sat there waiting to change planes, on this very day, a man began to manifest in front of me. I mean, I just, I was freaked out like everybody else. He stripped down to his underwear and started parading in front of me, nothing but his underwear. And at first, you know, just trying not to look at him, you know, like, I'm just trying to kind of be discreet, like, because I'm thinking, is this guy in swimming trunks or, or is this really... Underwear, or am I? I've been up for you know an over overnight flight for fifteen hours. I'm hallucinating. This man is not stripping in front of me in an airport. <laughs> but finally, I just th threw caution to the wind and I don't know what it is about some demons that make people do that, but that's what happened with the gathering. He would, when he would manifest in the tombs, he would strip naked and run around. And, and one of the signs that he was delivered was they saw, they found him sitting clothed in his right mind. But I mean, I'm watching this, <clears throat> and I, by the way, when I was doing all this, I had no understand or knowledge of the October 31st day and the Battle of Beersheba and, and it never occurred to me that I was doing this on the, on the 500th anniversary of, Re of Reformation. I just knew God said go there. I did not know there was even a Battle of Beersheba. I, I had heard about it but I, I never associated what those Aussies and New Zealanders did with Beersheba even though they did. And by the way, it was so heroic. The 800 horsemen that did that, it, it was so heroic. They went with nothing but, a, but a, uh, a rifle with a bayonet in it and a Bible. And the act was so insane. And, and, and all the army, both sides testified of seeing hundreds of angels, thousands of angels on the battlefield. And these, and these 800 of them defeated tens of thousands of Turks and it was so heroic and so amazing that even some of the Turkish soldiers stood up and began to applaud the 800 horsemen, the enemy. I had no idea that it was that timing. And so it's, it's this, this probably principality trying to mock me and say to me on, en route to Beersheba to get the gloves as a prophetic act for this movement saying, we're going to oppose you every step of the way. You're not going to get these gloves. But I said to the Lord, well, I know what the enemy's doing. What are you saying? He said, I'm going to expose and uncover the enemy. And I'm going to show my people his strongholds and who the giants are and where they rule so that my people can go knock them out and open up parts of the, of the earth 
to the gospel and to this revival, some of which have never had a move of God in history. There are dark parts of this planet that have been in darkness since the fall that are going to be liberated in this season and giants that have held them captive for 6,000 years are going to be <clears throat> knocked out with one blow from a re <coughs> from an ecclesia moving in revelation and they're going to walk in with Isaiah 22 22 and the gavel and they're going to and they're going to Open that part of the earth up to the gospel. And that's when Chuck gave the word. And I'm not going to go into this tonight because we don't have time. I don't know what time it is, but I do know where my kids are. <clears throat> that's too old for some of you. I know that just went right over some of you, but some of you got it. And I'll summarize this in, in like two minutes and I want Jeremy and Klaus you guys come up because we're just going to decree into this now for a few minutes when I got back from Beersheba Chuck gave me a word he gives me words sometimes and he says to me just right up front I don't, under, I don't know what this means but the Lord will show you they'll get a word I mean like one word or a phrase and he'll say, the Lord said, tell you this, and he'll show you what it means. And sometimes I just want to look at him and say, won't you just tell me what it means? Why do you have to? And he'll do it to me during the worship and say, you need to get up and share about this. I say, well, I don't know what it means. He says, well, I don't either, but God will show you. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm up in like 10 minutes. Why don't you get up and share on it? I mean, the prophets, you really think about it, the prophets haven't made in a lot of ways. They can just throw their stuff out there and it's like, what am I supposed to do that? Well, God will show you. That's not my job. It's just... this dream and you were riding this horse and John Wayne came in the room and the tuning forks and gavels and light starts emanating I'm going yeah I've just learned to flow with it you know it's like Lord put the weird anointing on me now so I can track with these prophets <laughs> and the funny thing about it is most of you are here because you are one of those people that can track with that. You get it. You are one of us. You, this is a scary movement. But he said to me, the Lord said, I'm going to pioneer Hebron again. And I don't know what that means, but the Lord will show you. Well, the Lord showed me. Because in all, in all seriousness, I've, I've just learned to flow with, I mean, the first time or two he did that to me, it was just like, man, my stomach's in knots. I've got to get up there. I don't have any idea what this is all about. I was, I, I, I'm supposed to take hours to prepare a message, not 10 minutes. You know, it's like, but I've just learned to flow with it. And God has used people like Chuck and Cindy and different ones to break me into a prophetic anointing, a lot, uh, not just a teaching. Anointing. But <clears throat> I'm not going to go into the whole, because it's a whole message, but Hebron, a place that represents covenantal friendship and became a place that represented covenantal friendship with God, because that's really what the name means. And as a sign of that covenantal friendship, as a symbolic thing, Abraham's buried at Hebron. Because it represents covenant and intimacy or friendship. But it had been taken over by giants. 
Now, I've just been to Beersheba as a prophetic act to get gloves to knock out giants, watching demons and principalities manifest in airports on Reformation Day. You can't make this stuff up, can you, John? And I don't even know it's that day. And he says, I don't know what this means, but God says he's going to pioneer Hebron again. Well, between Abraham and Joshua, and that's, by the way, it just there's a new book here at the conference called Giants Will Fall. It's kind of a sequel to Appeal to Heaven. It's all about this revelation of taking out giants. Small book, so even you guys can get it and read it. Don't look at me like that. I start writing small books so men would read them too. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And people under 30. It's, it's more than 140 characters, but you can, you can, trust me, you can deal with it. You can read it, okay? You can do it. But between Abraham and Joshua, when they went to take the land, Hebron had been taken over by giants. They had defiled it because it was a high place in Israel, highest city in Israel. They like high places. Took over Hebron, renamed it after himself, the giant did, Arba. Called it the city of or Kiriath Arba. Some of the time the spies go in, it's not a place that represents covenantal friendship with God. It's a place that represents terror and sin and evil and demons who have defiled the inheritance. Kind of like America. And Caleb goes in to spy out the land and 10 of the spies, you know, they're afraid because of the giants. That was the city that terrified those spies and caused them to say, we can't do this. And Caleb said, what do you mean we can't do this? I'll, not only can we do it, I'll take that, that one. That's the city I want. I'll take the big boy. And they had to wait because people wouldn't go for it, so they waited 40 years. And Caleb said, give me my mountain. He wasn't just saying, I like that high place. He was saying, give me the assignment of the big one. I'll take that one. I, I'm indignant against that spirit that has defiled the burial place of my great, 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 great granddaddy that I'm in covenant with, God's in covenant with, that is a friend of God. And in that dirt now, idols are being worshipped and an evil giant is ruling this territory. Give me my mountain. And he conquered it and he renamed it Hebron. And there's a rich history then, which I don't have time to go into, but conquering or pioneering Hebron again is when we go into places that have been defiled by spiritual giants that have stolen and defiled our covenantal inheritance and we transform it once again into a place from which the rule of God can manifest because Hebron became the first capital it, Jerusalem wasn't first David went in and established Hebron first as capital so we conquer we drive out the giants and the rule of God can emanate from that place Hebron became one of the cities of refuge. So from there, we release the salvation of the Lord into regions of the earth. Because the cities of refuge were types of Christ, Hebrews 6, 18. So if we're going to pioneer Hebron again, it means this is the season of taking out the giants. We're going to, I finally feel like the Lord is ready to start identifying these five giants to me. I'm not ready to talk about them, maybe not all, certainly not all of them. I'm not ready to do it here. Maybe we'll take 
one or two of these and begin to intercede or to make decrees at some point. And I'm not even convinced it's literally five. I think there are strongholds that are principalities and world rulers around the, around the earth that we're going to knock out in this season. And we're going to turn those places into strongholds of covenant and friendship with God. There are inner cities here and around the world that you wouldn't dare walk through yourself at day or night. That 10 years from now, you won't have any problem walking through that city at 2 in the morning because there'll be such a hovering presence of Holy Spirit there. Entire regions are going to be transformed. So, Lord, come on, stand up. Any of you guys that have been called on, come up here and pray into this. We're not going to try to do everything tonight. Don't worry. I just want to make some decrees to launch us into the next day and morning. And if you've got something you want to prophesy into this, Chuck, maybe you're finished. I don't know. But and Cindy. But we're not going to keep you long. It's been a long night. But a good night. So, Lord, we are gathered here as your ecclesia. We are here to do business for the king. We are here to decree the breakthrough that the prophets saw 10 months ago. We're here to decree the breakthrough we've been crying out for for 25 years. We are here to decree that this nation is about to experience a great turnaround and spiritual giants are about to be defeated by the ecclesia of, of the Lord Jesus Christ who owns the entire planet, every inch of it. The earth is his in the fullness thereof and no Psalm 2 demonic movement is going to stop your rule because you're going to extend your rod of iron from the ecclesia and you're going to break strongholds in the earth and you're going to liberate parts of the planet and this nation is going to turn around and a great revival is coming, a third great awakening to this nation, a great awakening around the world but a third great awakening here and we're launching it this weekend. We are bold to say you're going to tip the bowls of intercession this weekend because they are now filled with the prayers of the saints. An overwhelming victory is coming to the kingdom of God. You've never been outsmarted. You've never been overpowered. You've never had to play catch up. You're always way ahead of the enemy. And this weekend, you're going to help us cross over into this new anointing. And we decree a turnaround is coming in Jesus' name.